The other question that comes up, and I'm sure you all have, is, oh, my mother had macular degeneration, my father had macular degeneration. Uh, and it's very common, you know, the family history of macular degeneration is very common. Our next speaker is going to talk about genetics of macular degeneration. Uh, Dr. Thomas Stevens, who is professor of ophthalmology. In fact, Tom and I joined the department long time ago <laughs> together. So here is Tom Stevens. Thank you very much. Everybody has genes, and those genes uh, tell you to some extent, whether you're going to get macular degeneration or not. They're a risk factor. So I want to talk about the genes because some treatments can be uh, tailored to fit your genetic makeup. Thank you. Now my first slide is a little bit complicated. It's got a lot of information, but I thought we needed to just review the basics of, of genetics. So our body is made up of cells. Uh, we have almost as many cells as our national debt. There's 10 trillion cells that make us up, believe it or not. Each cell has a chemical called DNA. So that uh, cartoon there on the side shows you the, uh, a cell, and at the heart, at the center of it, is this complex molecule that's all wound up and compressed into one little spot, and that's your DNA. The DNA is like a computer program that tells your cells what chemicals to make, what structure. Well, you've got to have brown hair, you're going to have blue eyes, you're going to have uh, long fingernails, uh, you're going to have uh, changes in your skin, in your organs. So all of those things are determined by that chemical message that's contained in the DNA. The, uh, but sometimes this very complex molecule can make mistakes. Now, you could compare it to the air traffic control center. You know, at any one time, they, you know, this recent thing in Chicago, they tell us that they're aware of like 500 planes in the air at any one time. Well, that sounds pretty complex, but this DNA molecule is aware of many more things, so it's a much more complex system than your air traffic controller, and yet it does a similar job. It tells what chemical to do what, and how to interact, and what structures to make. So that's, that terribly complex program can make little errors at times, because it has to replicate itself. Each of those 10 trillion cells is a replication of the DNA that's in your body. And every time it's replicated, a little tiny error can take place. And those errors are what cause us uh, different uh, changes in our bodies and also disease. Now, do these gene errors cause age-related macular degeneration? The answer is yes and no. There are other factors that determine the final effect of these genes. So the genes can set up the situation. They can give the basis for which something is going to happen, but whether uh, what your age is is certainly going to determine it, how long those, uh, your, the processes in your eyes have to go on and on. Uh, diet, nutrition has a big effect. Uh, smoking is a particularly strong effect, uh, a negative effect on, on these genes. Uh, and we can look at the appearance of the retina and, and tell you whether uh, whatever genetic area you have is causing any kind of problems. So how many genes are there that affect the DNA? And here again on the right-hand side of the slide, you have a, a little cartoon of a cell, and then the DNA is sort of being stretched out and pulled out of the cell, and it forms this kind of coil. You've probably seen pictures of this. Uh, there's been many genes associated with uh, macular degeneration, a few of them are associated with a reduced risk. They find that, oh gosh, if a person has this genetic makeup, they're at less risk for getting uh, AMD. 
But the ones that, there's, there's two of them that have a really strong bad effect, a very high risk for uh, developing advanced macular degeneration. The names I've written there on the slide, ARMS2 and CFH, are the names that you might see when you read the newspaper at times. So this is the situation that we often run into that was re referenced by Dr. Ip. Here's a, uh, an elderly lady with macular degeneration. The pictures of her retinas are there. The top pictures show before the, uh, she's got wet AMD, so she's had treatment for wet AMD. And the t pictures on the top are her right and her left eye before treatment. And the pictures on the, on the bottom are the right and left eye after some treatment. But she comes in, she's brought in by her daughter, uh, or could be a friend, could be a neighbor. Uh, but in this case, it's her daughter. And the daughter says, well, gosh, my mom has this. Should I have my genes tested to know whether I'm going to have it or not? Very common situation. And the answer is no. It costs money. It may be misleading because there's people who have the genes but never get the disease. So it's a risk factor. It's not a necessarily, it's not a cause. It's not something that's going to produce that disease. It's just a risk factor. Lifestyle, things you do, how you live uh, will also, and other genes that, uh, that interact with this genes uh, will determine whether you get it. So it could be misleading. Or you may have a negative genetic test but you're going to get the disease anyway. So it can be misleading in that sense. Even if you have a positive test, there's no known treatment. There's nothing that you can do about it at this stage. Uh, the risk is better told. There's better ways of telling whether you might get it or not by your age, by the appearance of your retina, whether you have the little yellow spots and what the characteristics of those yellow spots are whether you smoke or not, and what your diet is. Those things will tell us just as much about your risk for macular degeneration as a genetic test. So the answer now is no. Next year, if I give this talk or somebody else gives a talk, the answer may be very different because there's research being done now to determine if certain patterns of genes respond differently to treatments. So suppose you have pattern A. You have uh, those two genes I mentioned, and uh, there's no defects in them or a half a defect, and there's other genetics tests that were done and shows that you have pattern A. It may find out that, boy, pattern A better not take any zinc. That's not good for pattern A. But vitamin C is really good for pattern A. Then there might be pattern C, and that pattern responds to yet another treatment. Uh, in fact, even treatment of wet macular degeneration. They might find out that, gee, pattern A responds well to Lucentis, but pattern B does not. So next year, maybe, we'll have the answer to, yes, get your genes tested, because that will determine which is the best treatment uh, for your macular degeneration. Thank you very much. Appreciate your attention.